Go to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Today we are doing the, I guess you would say, instant classic, uh, <laughs> Cosmic Sin. Big Hollywood hit. Hollywood hit, yeah. Movie of the year? Wow, quite possibly. <gasps> Cosmic Sin. Todd, why the fuck did we launch this movie? <laughs> I have no fucking idea. I didn't even know they made movies this bad still. Apparently they do. Oh, and, uh, fuck. As we found out, there's a bunch more exactly like it. Oh, man. This is not an isolated incident. There are no. many, many more. So, Cosmic Sin. And oh, also, first of all, I want to apologize to anyone that um, watched this in anticipation of our episode. Oh, or, God. It's something. Yeah, yeah. It's something. Um, but, uh, you know, we saw Bruce Willis in a new space movie, and we just couldn't resist uh, we both kind of know that he's been doing movies like this, and we haven't seen any. Yeah, we haven't. Re- I haven't really seen any of the uh, bad Bruce Willis movies I've been hearing yeah. about. Mm-hmm. This is my first taste of it. Yeah. Like, and like he's like some movies he's made haven't been the greatest, but they're not to this. Right. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. It's this new trajectory he's on that I think he's completely fine with, which is something we'll talk about. But. Um, <laughs> Cosmic Sin, as we said, is the movie. It was uh, it was directed by Edward Drake, written by Edward Drake and Corey Large. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I said his name like that. <laughs> oh, you have to. But um, yeah, it's kind of an interesting name, Corey it Large. <laughs> Sounds like a wrestler. Yeah, actually, there is a wrestler in this movie, which is what I found out. C.J. Perry is the name, the actor's name, who plays the. Girl warrior with the yellow braids. Oh, she's a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which yeah, like, I can see that. You know, this is the type of movie that should have with wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's probably just like, yeah, this is my big break. <laughs> well, let's hope not. Um, actually, I guess real quick, like she she apparently was a groundling. She's trying to make like a comedy career, which is pretty interesting. Well, she she chose <laughs> she made the right choice here, I guess. Like, I guess this is kind of. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> I, I, it's tearing a line here. <laughs> I, I, I did. I did have a bunch of laugh out loud moments watching this. I don't know about you. <sighs> I mean, no? I did, but for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, but yeah. not. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have anything else to say on who made it or whatever, other than Corey Large, uh, one of the writers. Co. Can we call him Co? Yes, we can. C Large. So C Large. Uh, he also plays one of the characters in this. Um, and he's the he's the producer of the movie. So oh, two, oh. yeah. <laughs> and he's produced a few of these, and we'll we'll talk about those. Um, is, he, yeah. is he just like was Zoe in it? Like why Zoe in it? Like he's just like he's like fuck it. He's <laughs> like time to produce. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess yeah. he's a modern day with Zoe yeah, in, yeah, like, in a few ways. Um, <laughs> I don't know. If he, I don't. I doubt he didn't fund this thing. Uh, he it was produced by. 308. 308 Productions, yeah. which is actually Vancouver. Really? Uh, they have an LA branch, but they did it in Vancouver. Very large is from Victoria, so it probably has some stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I saw it was uh, distributed by uh, Saban, which Saban, if you may know Saban, Saban was the uh, the company that released Power Rangers in the early oh, 90s. Really? Yeah, okay. that was their big, like... This uh, seems like a Power Rangers type movie. Well, that's <laughs> what I thought, too, yeah, right? right? When I saw the Saban thing at the beginning, I was like, okay. I was like, what's that company that sold the Power Ranger toys? And, like, they're oh, obviously... Oh, shit. Res- yeah, they're responsible, obviously, for, like, I believe the first and the second Power Rangers movie, which Box, like, did well. Like, the first Power Rangers movie did well in the box office. Right. But this had that look of that movie. But Maybe. still in 1995. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, Maybe that was a clause when they were making this movie. They're like, you have to wear some sort of brightly colored suits. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like we need to sell some toys and which, shit. Which they do kind of wear some like brightly colored suits. The big star in this movie, as you mentioned, is Bruce Willis. Bruce Willie. He's uh, on the poster and everything. We'll get into that at some point, too. I got some stuff Speaking with that. Speaking of the poster, doesn't it look exactly like the first Star Wars poster? No, it looks like that fucking Tom Cruise movie. 
where uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> like that's what I thought. Which also this... looks like Star Wars poster. Also, kind of. Oh, yeah, just... I, yeah, you're yeah. catering to an audience at that point. Edge of Tomorrow is that what you're Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he also had that like he had that statement where it was like Edge of Tomorrow. And then there was another one. Remember with Morgan Freeman in it? Oh, uh, that had that really stupid mm-hmm. twist at the end. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. spoil it because some people probably... What is that called? Oblivion. Oblivion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just for you. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but the twist is fucking dumb. <laughs> is it's the stupidest thing Is the twist you're talking about he wasn't blind the whole time? <laughs> no, no, that's, that's fucking... That's book of Eli. Book of Eli. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, wait, uh, what? <laughs> what sense of Washington? Who cares? <laughs> Fuck it. Um, um, but anyway, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> There's like four kind of main characters in this movie. Um, yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah. Um, so Perry Reeves plays like his sort of love interest. Yes. I don't know. Adelaide Kane. She's the. <laughs> She's the engineer. Yes. Like yeah. The wrench. The wrench they keep calling. What? Which is something that he also the first the time wrench. the guy calls calls her the wrench he explains why. <laughs> We call her the wrench because of this, <laughs> yeah. which, which, you know, pissed me off even no more. Shit. Other shit happens in the movie that they do not explain. And I was like, you told me about this <laughs> little... about the wrench thing. But you, you didn't explain any other, like, convoluted, like, yeah, so shitty guy, the guy goes, hey, wrench. If anyone calls someone a wrench, what do you think they do? They're... Mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. Like, he's like, hey, by the way, I called you that because you're a mechanic. He's like, oh, no worries. But then later on in the movie, someone random calls her wrench as well. It makes you believe that that's a common expression for, like, engineers in this world. So why did he have to explain that he's calling her a wrench because she's an engineer? <laughs> but there's many of those moments. We... Yeah, because we're, yeah, we're going to get into I'm even going to... Okay, so he was in it. She's in it. And then who is the other guy? Right. Um, well, the guy that played, like, the young nephew guy, you know what I mean, is uh, Brandon Thomas Lee. The other guy was on the poster with him as well. Yeah, so Frank Grillo. Frank Grillo, yeah. So he's in like he's in a couple of Marvel movies. Yeah, he's in I think he's in uh Civil War or Winter, Winter Soldier or one of the Captain America movies. He plays a villain. Oh, uh, okay. Um and we'll get into that too, obviously. But yeah, like obviously it's clear they just picked a couple people to throw on the poster. <laughs> Kind of thing, like well, yeah, because that guy Frank Grillo. Okay, that makes sense because he's on the poster. Yes, and he's not in the movie very much. No, he, he's Cranston. And they're Cranstoning it, right? And yeah. I also don't know. Yeah, like from Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, and I also don't know who this guy is. So I found that like very confusing. Yeah, I know. I was confused the- too. I was like, I was like, why the fuck is he in the movie? I was like, why, kinda- or why he was on the poster is what I was. Yeah. So do you want to talk about anyone else? Well, let's go. We can go through the plot. I'm gonna let you explain the plot because. This one was a bit of a fucking... All right. <laughs> I don't even... I was going to say... So the problem with the plot is that it's like... It, the general it's so, story. It's confusing, right? You, you don't know what the fuck's going on the whole time. So from yeah. what I gathered, the general story is... This is the year... 2,500. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 25, 24. 2,500 something. Yeah. Um, so uh, they obviously have space travel, sort of, invented... And yeah, wormholes, uh, wormholes, I believe. They, they actually even like call it like teleporting. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but the point is, is that two people on some shitty planet get attacked by aliens, and they teleport some of these aliens back, who end up yeah. just being people, kind of in zombie form, not right. aliens attacking them. Which they then realize that the aliens are hostile because they keep trying to, they keep keeping track of contact points. Which we'll get into at some point because I had some fucking real laughs with that. But anyway, so they travel to this distant planet to fight the alien foe. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so they keep talking about this like first contact thing. Yeah. Right. Which is like so it, the movie starts and there's this kind of like unknown enemy outside and they're like no one's supposed to be here and then those people die and they're like oh we made first contact and it's like. Well, they have, like, intergalactic space travel. Couldn't it be just, like, somebody from another, like, local planet or something? It's kind of weird that way. But, yeah, like, then, like you said, that was my first most confusing thing when it's, like, there's zombies now. Yeah. Like, so that first contact thing happens on some random moon, but then there's zombies in there. No, those are the people that came, they brought them back. The people that made contact with them. Oh, so they become the zombies. They become, like, the hosts or whatever. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. 
And then I think that's when they realize that the alien is hostile and that they're going there to fight them or face them. So that's the entire plot. Like, oh, and really they have that, that bomb that they bring with them, too. Oh, yeah. That... What the <laughs> fuck was that <laughs> thing the called? The Q-bomb. Yeah, like call... is that... But they never explain that. They're just like, bring the Q-bomb. And I'm like, what is the Q-bomb? Yeah, <laughs> they, they do, like, near the end, which, yeah, kind of doesn't make sense. So Because the, they set it up as this, like, bad thing. Why don't they just tell you what it did? You know it killed 70 million people. But there's 70 million people in, like, I don't know, Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so... They're very vague. But what it can do, they say later, is kill... as a blast that could, like, definitely destroy a planet. They said from, from Earth to Pluto. Yes. That's what they said earlier, yeah. So like, if one was used before, and it killed 70 million people, I guess it happened on some, like... Really it must happen on, like, some it. other fucking... But that doesn't seem as bad as <laughs> from Earth uh, to Pluto, right? Yeah. Like, there's so many of those moments and in then, the- and then, okay, so we're talking about spoilers this whole time because, like, who fucking Who cares? the fuck cares? Nobody's yeah. excited to see this movie. So, like we said, the reason why we watch this movie is because, you know, we've heard of Bruce Willis doing all these shitty, like, they all seem to be, like, in space movies, and we're like, let's check it out. Yeah, they're kind of just these weird, like, yeah, like, Su- low budget. Yeah, super space, low budget. Like, space movies. And I'm, like, looking at it, I'm like, what is going on? And as we're going through the IMDb list, he's done this one. I started watching the wrong movie. I started watching. <laughs> I started watching this other movie, and I was like, "This isn't the one we were watching." It turns out, um, it's made by the same guy. It's called Breach, and it's on Amazon. Yeah. So I saw also. It so, came before this one. Yeah. So there's Breach. There's a movie called like Broil, and this one, and they're all produced by Carl Large, or what was his name? C um, Large. C Large. Corey Large. Corey Large. They're all produced by him. And, yeah, so it seems like he made, like, this deal with him, I think. And there's another one coming out. Oh, yeah. fuck. Are so, you kidding me? Called Apex. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> which is something, which is a word that keeps coming oh up in our, God. In our I know. podcast. Yeah. Yo, you think they'll get Apex? <laughs> the actual guy? Like, I sure hope they do. Oh, the wrestler? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so, so, yeah, what I found out about his, like, contract is that he, his contract states that he will work one day. So they shoot all this stuff in one day for a million to two million dollars. Yes. I was reading that as well, yes. So he must have done these three, well, four movies. And essentially he's going to work for four days and make, what, well, four to eight million dollars. Yeah. Oh, and the other stipulation is that he has to appear on the poster. Yes. So that's why, like, you Yes. Know. He had to be on the poster. and But I think, his, I think the funny thing was they had, like, something. His stunt double had more screen time than he did or something like that. Like, okay, yeah, well, that that makes sense, yeah, because he's, like, filming for the one day. And, and, yeah, I guess that's why, like, he always appears in, like, a close-up. Yes. So it's kind of like they could film it in sort of anywhere, like, any location and make the viewer think he's in the one where everyone else is, and that's the point of the movie, right? Yeah. It seems like everything looks like it's, like, a Burbank lot. All the buildings. <laughs> it looks like they and just shot like it all little, in a parking lot. And then like, there's little spaceships flying up above. above. Oh, my God. It's, there's always there's always asphalt under their feet. And it's always clearly <laughs> asphalt. And I noticed that. Even when they're in, like, a forest kind of scenery thing. Oh, really? There's still, you can see on the ground, there's still, like, ash. They're walking on asphalt. You can hear it kind of, too. Interesting. And I was like, I remember watching it. I was like, oh, you just, like, you guys, like, I feel like they shot this whole thing in one scene and, and like, one area. And they just use different backdrops. This, this is what I thought. Well, when I was thinking about how the fact that he only shot one day, I was like, okay, so they're in a studio with all the interior sets. And then, you know, at the end, they're out. It, it seems like they're probably in the back lot of that studio because they're out behind a building. Oh, yeah. They're probably, fuck it. Let's take it outside. And then they use the front lot for those other scenes when she's on. Because like, it's different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, that's what I figure. There's like one location. And then there's woods. But you can see the woods. That's what I'm saying. The back lot. So maybe so. there's like a connected forest or something. I think that that's too. where they filmed it. Yeah. You know, as we see in the woods, it's not like this grand location or anything. Do you think the location scout was just like, he walked out of the office and he's like, fuck it, let's just shoot it here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's I, like look, trees. No, I, yeah. I think, lot one, lot B. I lot think that's a, probably B. in the like stipulation to make the movie is like, you, you can only shoot around here because it's too expensive. And also, Bruce Willis won't travel to more than one location. I can just working the one day. Yeah. Like, <laughs> has he figured something out that we're just gonna see people like 
Because, like, yeah. what the fuck does he care? He's getting paid that <laughs> well, money. Exactly. Like, you know? And then he, they're, they're paying him that money, and he's not doing anything. And, like... Yeah, he 100% doesn't give a fuck that he's in shitty movies. Because this movie was rated super poorly. But the three before this one were two. Yes. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he gives a shit. It's like, it's just at this point, it's like... He's checked out, and I'm kind of like... I'm kind of like, you know, whatever. Good for him, I guess. I mean, it's... <laughs> easy money, but... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's maybe he's just old and he's like, yeah. I don't give a shit. He's anymore. over being a, like, critically acclaimed uh, actor. Yeah, because I think, like... But, like, you can't even really compare it to, like, like someone like Sam Jackson who's in a lot of stuff. Because mm-hmm. at least Sam Jackson tries. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> like, we're just, well, like, like, uh... Oh, yeah, he shows you no emotion. Yeah, I <laughs> And it was funny because, like, I was reading a comment of it, like, you can't even say that he phoned it in because even talk to someone on the phone, you get more emotion <laughs> than you went out of him in this. Like, he just looks like he does not give a... Which I, made me laugh even more. There's one scene in the movie where, like, some guy's like, he's like, what are you doing? And the guy's like, I'm thinking. He's like, well, don't think too hard. You hurt oh, yourself yeah. or something like that. And I he, remember that And line. he kind of laughs as he says it, and they just cut away from it. I'm like, I wonder if he made himself buck like I wonder if he made that joke and they left it in there. <laughs> they were just like maybe, yeah, maybe he's just like there were a lot of shitty. Lines oh, because like the fucking script writing honestly is probably the one of the fucking worst things I've ever like. Yeah, I've like ever the seen especially. the dialogue was the worst dialogue I've ever seen. One of the worst dialogues I've ever seen in a movie. Even like those really shitty movies that are like that end up being funny down the road. Right. At least like have like some form of like sh- this was like just so bad yeah especially i was gonna say from brandon thomas lee who plays like oh that guy had some fucking one-liners yeah yeah this. yeah i think the one doctor says like they're planning this like mission thing so they're like trying to figure out the map and, and of, of like to get there oh yeah stuff. the jump yeah, yeah yeah whatever it is and she goes yeah, um, well, I think I can figure this out. Math and phy- physics are generally the same everywhere in the place. And I was like, generally? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> what I know about math and physics is that they, they just don't change. They're like, hey, it's the years we thought. <laughs> it's, it's, fi- it's 500 years from now. Yeah. Who knows what they figured out? Do you want to know what my favorite thing was? The funniest thing is that there's always like time since contact, right? So, when the zombies show up, if you're watching the time from contact thing, the oh zombies show up, it's like seven minutes from contact. The zombies just showed up. Wow, that was fast. I know. Right? And then they're blasting the zombies. Bruce Willis comes in. He fucks shit up. He saves the day. Mm. And then they're all sitting at a table. And they're like, we got to go to this planet. We got to uh-huh. fuck shit up. We yeah. got to save this stuff. They put on all this armor. They're getting ready to jump. 40 minutes since contact. I, I was like, did all this shit just happen <laughs> yeah. in 30 minutes? I was like, I don't fucking think so. I was like, what? I, so I saw that one when it said 40 minutes from contact. I was like, what? And I was like, that confused me so much because this is already an hour into the movie. So yeah, at least an hour has happened. <laughs> I was like, why did who who fucking decided that should be, be in the script? You tell me all this happened in 40 minutes. I was sitting there, I was like, yeah. What? And they go to all these different locations, it seems like, right? There's like four different places. Yeah. Uh, there's a bar. There's a place. <laughs> there's the, the original place that it starts at. Insane. I, uh, I want to talk about, so the year, the year, when it's supposed to take place a bit. Because it's... Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. 500 years in the future, mm-hmm. right? So it all looks the exact same, except for spaceships, a couple in the sky. Uh, you know, the, even the bars look the same. yeah, yeah. Right. Even people dress the same. Well, <laughs> yeah. Clearly, they their wardrobe came from Target. Clearly, there's still Target in the year 2,500. Yeah. They're, they're just normal clothes with, like, a fucking trench coat on. They're all wearing flannels. Did you oh, yeah, that? that's right. All the people in the background are, are wearing, like, button-up, open button-up plaid shirts. Like, they, they're, they're definitely, like, the fucking crew members that they just, like, brought in. You know, they're running in the background with guns. Like but they say that, like, fashion is cyclical, so maybe in, like, 500 <laughs> years, it'll just... You know what, man? Maybe in 500 years... I'm no fucking <laughs> Dolce, Dolce Gabbana or whatever. But at one like. point, they're putting on, like, their fucking army gear, and the guy's literally wearing, like, a North Face jacket. You can see the plastic zipper. It's got the fake fucking fur parka thing behind it. You know, it's got, like, camo <laughs> design, but they 100% bought it at, like, a fucking, 
Walmart or some shit. Oh yeah, the guy's fucking good enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the special like the practical stuff was my favorite though. Like like some of the practical shit, like you know those suits that they're wearing. They yeah. looked so bad. Yeah. And I was sitting there, I was like, oh, some poor fucker probably spent so long fucking yeah. putting that together. Yeah, it was probably, like, the greatest fucking accomplishment. Did you notice that none of them fit the actors properly? That they were shaking around? <laughs> oh, no. Like, yeah, so they were putting the helmets on and stuff, you could <laughs> see. Makes sense. I mean, I'm sure they didn't pay a fuck ton to make these things, like. I hope it fits kind of thing, like, when they were making them, you think? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean like, well, what do you think? The budget was probably, like, five million. It must have been. Maybe, maybe a bit less, 2.5. I didn't see how much this one grossed. But I know that the one pre- It grossed 40 million. Really? Yeah. The so other one grossed 42. It said it's- re- So that's not bad. Well, it said its release place was in Taiwan. So I'm assuming this is catered to like more of the Asian market, I'm assuming. You know, with like aliens and like robots and shit. Yeah, yeah. It could be the Chinese market. Yeah, that's yeah. what they're looking for. They're probably looking to make a quick buck. Like, they're like, fuck it, we'll make this movie for well, yeah, five mil. Well, 40 and then million we'll, is not yeah, you're, something to fucking that's 30, laugh about. Yeah, that's $35 well, million dollars in profit. Yeah, so I guess. Like, I'm just guessing that it's $5 million budget. I couldn't find the budget online, but... Yeah, I couldn't either. But, you know, even if it's 10, it's definitely not more than that. No, they definitely made a profit. Mm-hmm. Now, is it right? <laughs> like... It, is this like some moral question? Like this big thing? Like, you know what? I I guess so. If people are gonna watch them, like maybe they sell them to streaming services too. That could be another thing too. So I'm assuming that they're just pumping them out and putting them on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's like two B or I mean, whatever. there's certainly a market for these. They're they're making them. Yeah, and I guess you put Bruce Willis in, it and they're like someone can watch it. I mean, yeah. fuck, we did. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, I guess that that's what the marketing is behind it is putting Bruce Willis. In. I guess that's the what the Amer for the American market, putting Bruce Willis's face. Really, I think it would be more for the Asian market. Maybe because they'd be like, oh, yeah, Bruce they like stars. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah, you know, like they want to yeah. see Hollywood, like big Hollywood people, right? But um, yeah, I mean, there's been three. There's a fourth one coming. Uh, there's probably no end in sight for these. Who, whoever they're for. As long as they're making money, they're going to keep making them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and you can't really be mad. Like, we we kind of had to search for this movie, and we watched it just because we thought it'd be a laugh. It's not like it's going in every theater, and it's about to disappoint the entire country. Oh, yeah, direct to DVD, right? I like, think <laughs> for sure. Like, this is not this is not hitting the box office <laughs> in any fucking shape or way. <laughs> I would be I'd be upset if, if someone went to go see this in theaters like yeah that's almost like you know well I saw it as in because the, you know, New Zealand's open I thought I saw it as in theaters there and they made 14,000 in New Zealand oh so someone paid me to see that <laughs> oh yeah. fuck that's like one of those I want my money back situations like without even getting into like how bad uh, like the, how bad of a movie it was like for someone who's not expecting that, like, who's like, okay, this could be good. Like, like that's what I was expecting, kind of. I was expecting, like, that Edge of Tomorrow thing, like, kind of thing. Like, I knew it wasn't going to be good. I just didn't think it was going to be this fucking bad. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I, I thought it would be pretty bad. Fuck. <laughs> 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 and, yeah, it's bad. Let's uh, rate it. What would you rate it? Oh, fuck. Two. Two, eh? Two. I say we can't recommend this movie. Obviously, I can't. I can't let you watch. If, it, don't watch yeah, it. Yeah, it, does it ride that line of it's so bad it's funny, or does it not? I like that term because it, it rides that line. Because I'm like, some I, I found myself laughing a couple times, but like overall, just like literally, I was in yeah. sheer shock most of the time. I was like, they made someone made this and was mm-hmm. like, and, and like these actors agreed to this. And yeah, I feel like it. Yeah, it just rides the line. It's not quite everyone has to watch this because it's so bad it's funny. There's like a couple moments, but there's a lot of like longer scenes that are just boring and kind of And it makes no sense. Yeah. But it doesn't make no sense in the funny way. Like, how the fuck did this happen? Yeah. It makes no sense in the way that it's just like... They didn't tell you the information. Yeah, they're not telling me something, right? Uh, It's not like they tried to explain it poorly. They just didn't tell me. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I was wishing that we watched this together when I was watching it or like with somebody. I watched it with my girlfriend and oh, fuck. (laughs) There was like, we're flying out like, what the fuck? Like the comments are just running. Like, so it is. Exactly. So if you watch it with somebody, it can mm -hmm. be funny. But for the love of God, do not watch this on your own. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. I the the one thing that I fear is that people will watch this thinking it might be okay. That's that's the issue with having someone like Bruce Willis on your poster. It's like, yeah, that can sell the movie for these people and you know, he knows what he's doing. He's phoning it in to make money, but like people will watch it cuz they see him and then be disappointed, terribly disappointed, and that kind of sucks. Yeah, he's letting the fans down. Yeah, I mean, and that, he, only, that, that only hinders his career because then by doing shit like that. Yeah, but his career's over. Yeah, like, wouldn't he make another fucking Die Hard movie? Who cares? <laughs> well, I was gonna say I was looking up like his recent movies, and it says rumored they're doing a movie called McLean. Why? So yeah, why does it need to be called McLean? I guess it's gonna be like an origin story for Die Hard, is my guess. Yeah, maybe it's like how he started out, right? Like before Nakatomi Towers, because he's a cop, right? Or like, yeah, yeah, that's true. So maybe it's just like what, what's it, him going to be in the NYPD, and like is that well, interesting? Well, he wouldn't be in it, obviously, but like, well, no, he's that's where I saw it. Is he, he's credited. But it says rumored, but he's credited on IMDb. Oh, uh, okay. So oh, yeah, like so a flashback. Because it, it wouldn't be him. It wouldn't be him in like a hairpiece. Like, you know? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Just sitting there like a young woman. Yeah, like, maybe he's in it for a bit, like at the beginning or at the end. Yeah. And there's like most of it is someone else. Or well, maybe it's not an origin story at all. It's just another diehard where they're trying to like get more people to see it because it's a better title like... You know how they do like with Die Hard one, two, three. Yeah, well, I mean now Die Hard with Vengeance. Seven, yeah, uh, Die Hard, uh, Die Harder, Die uh, <laughs> Live Free, Die Hard. Right. Uh, There's something that's called like a a good day to die hard. A good it's a good day to die. Something I think that like might that. be the newest one, or or a bad day to die hard. I don't know. Yeah, because there's one where he goes to Russia. And I remember the poster was like, uh, yippee ki Mother Russia or something. I was like, come on. <laughs> I actually love that. I was like, come on. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was like the Hemsworth brother plays, one of the Hemsworths plays his son or something like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, because his daughter. Yeah, maybe it's his son in this one then, if that is a recent movie. Because that, that was, was a, I think that was the last one they made. It would be a McLean. Well, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, with Rocky and they made Creed. Like, it's just called Creed and it, you know, it's about Creed, Paul Creed's son. son. But Rocky's still in it. Yeah, so it could be something like that for this movie. If if it's happening. I mean, it's on IMDb. It's probably happening. I don't know. It could be cancelled at any moment, I guess. Is so why it says rumored. Yeah, the, the way that this guy's making movies right now, I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing's going to shock Yeah, but me. if he's like, if it's if it's about like his son, and, and they're like, do you want to... Yeah, like, you'll have one or two days of filming. Fuck it, I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be in the fucking last scene, or the first scene or the you know, a couple this is uh, you know Bruce, it's we'll give Bruce you 10 was, million it's Bruce's contract it doesn't work this for be, more than three days <laughs> this would be the best thing to happen to him he'd be he'd be stoked he's like oh I've been doing all these movies for one million for a movie like that's gonna sell more so they're like we'll give you 10 million to be in three days he's like I'll take it do you think he's figured this out like do you think he's like do you think we're gonna see so much more of this now yeah do you, do you, do you mean do, you, do I think other actors will follow uh, yeah him? yeah and who could you see doing this <laughs> that is a good question I don't think like we're gonna see this big uh like a bunch of people are gonna follow in those footsteps but because i just think with the rise of the streaming services now you yeah, like you true. see every single well, thing is coming out a while yeah i know but it's starting to ramp up i'm sorry i mean and people have done this in the past like other actors mm. have too um you know there's a lot of actors that work for a paycheck yeah like uh, i'm talking like big from a to from a to d you know <laughs> like, <laughs> that's true like, who's dropping some letters? Like, that's what I'm trying to think. I'm like... Who's dropping some yeah, yeah. letters? Yeah, who's dropping some spots? That's another fucking, like, sportscaster thing. Yeah, yeah. who's what, dropping some letters? What did you say last time? It puts butts in the seats? Yeah, it puts butts in the seats. Yeah. Who's dropping some letters? Yeah. That's gotta be our new way to... Yeah. Who's <laughs> dropping some letters from a, to, from a to B to C to D? Now, if you go from A to D, you've done... You're doing something. Oh, I mean, he went... He, yeah, he Bruce Willis went from A to D. But yeah. one thing I was gonna bring up about Bruce Willis, he's not a fucking like artistic actor in critically acclaimed no movies. you get like, what you get you get like, bruce willis die hard's amazing and he's good in that but it's still like he's just always bruce willis yeah yeah so so that fall from grace i guess is not like that 
strange to me. It's not like it's not like Daniel Day Lewis is starting to do these movies or someone <laughs> like that. But how amazing would that be? <laughs> on this on, on this week's episode on this week's episode of Bob Hart's Abby Shola, guest stars <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> I said I was quitting acting. I didn't mean I was. Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine a directed DVD release movie like with Daniel Day Lewis, like or like someone? It's yeah. always a surprise for me, you know, when you see them, like, you can always tell that they're, like, they put you on the cover, like, just to mm-hmm. try and, like... Here's the thing I always wonder about, well, people like Bruce Willis, like, he has a lot of money, why does he need to keep working? Like, like Ed, Eddie Murphy fucking retired, because I was money. I was thinking he of that. He doesn't too. have to act anymore. Yeah, he doesn't care. So why, yeah, like... Is it something where it's like, I always need to work type of thing because I've been a workaholic my whole life? But that kind of contradicts him being like, I don't want to work for more than three days. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. So, so it's not that. Maybe he's it? looking for retirement and he's on the back, he's, you know, he's on the back nine. He's just like... Or maybe you know, like, is it like a, is there a financial thing? Is he like a fucking gambler or did he like... You know, fuck up on his taxes or something. Yeah, it's shit. very close to like it's very similar to the Nick Cage thing where Nick Cage owed a bunch of money and you just start you seeing go. him and everything, right? So it could be that. Yeah. It yeah. could be that. And Nick Cage have stayed that way. Yeah. That's actually a really Nick good Nick Cage never recovered from that. That's okay. a really good parallel. Is he, that's a good example. Nick Cage does these types of movies. Because Nick as Cage well. was an A list uh action star, you know. Oh, yeah. Looking at like The Rock face off and shit like that. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. out of nowhere, it started off with a few bad ones, kind of very similar to this. And then it just kind of stayed the course, right? Yeah, and Nick Cage is an Academy Award winner, yeah. right? Like, yeah. yeah, he has and, an Oscar. Yeah, exactly. I don't I'm just saying, like I'm not saying all of his movies now are bad, but most of them are. Right? It's like John Boyd. He's a, he's a, oh, he has God. an Oscar and he was in Baby Geniuses too. That's right. Oh, <laughs> and what what was that? Of shitty movies. Our, our Pacino was in that fucking... Uh, oh, Jack and Jill. Oh, fuck. Oh, I remember seeing that and I was like, no. I was like, you're so much better than that. That's a fall from grace. Yeah, like why? But that... Or that, I have De Niro's in those fucking bad grandpa movies. That's true. But I mean, these guys are fucking old. I guess that's what it is. Like I mean, everyone Bruce has Willis their price, is old or, too. Or, it's like they're done making these like these huge like projects where exactly. it's like you've got to be on location. Well, they're and... done being an artist, you know. They're they're done like bleeding their fucking uh, performance or whatever. Yeah, they're like fuck it. I can just make a million dollars for yeah. doing for phoning it in for and take care of my grandkids. You know, yeah, or give my kids a legacy. I guess you know. Like, I guess that's what it is. You know, open a couple of restaurants. I don't know. Call it, call it Shea Willis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know what I just realized? Bruce Willis. Okay. What you talking about, Willis? Okay. From uh, Bruce Willis was in Look Who's Talking. Oh. I don't know ever said, what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> 30 years opportunity. I'm sure someone made that joke. Maybe it was John Travolta. What are you talking about? I mean, for all night, I know it was on the poster, but... Uh, yeah, because he wasn't Look Who's Talking. He, he wasn't. Was... That's a big missed opportunity is all I'm saying. Oh, yeah, he's the baby in Look Who's Talking. Yeah. Is he the baby? Yeah, he's like he's the baby's voice. Yeah, yeah, I think he's the baby's yeah, voice. Yeah. That's right. Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, what's that scene in the office where uh, Michael's like, "May I?" and he goes and sits under the table. <laughs> he's like, "Look who's talking now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, if he's gonna keep making these movies and getting paid for it, fuck it. What are you gonna do? Let's just hope that like it doesn't become a normal thing where like you know we see like. I mean, these movies are always gonna exist. Like they're they're. Yeah, like, but it, it is also kind of career suicide, like. Yeah, if you do that, you're not gonna come back, you know, from that really. Unless Tarantino yeah. puts him in a movie. Yeah. Which God oh, gives always yeah, that's true. He likes to do that. He likes to save people's careers. Like, you know, he's like Yeah, but even I think he realizes like once you're old enough like this, there's no saving you. Yeah, I'm sure he Like is. someone like Bruce Willis isn't trying to have a redemption, like maybe I don't know. Robert Downey Jr. did or something like that. Yeah. Someone who's fallen from grace, but they're still young enough to be like looking for fucking roles to mm-hmm. reunite their career or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, that happens all the time. But I think he's not like this. If Bruce Willis is put in a, a fucking Oscar type movie, he'll still go back to doing this. Yeah, yeah. Like he just revert back to it. But I think in those days of the Oscar stuff, I need to be over. Like, we're not going to see anything else big. I mean, never no. say never, but 
you know. Yeah, I agree. Don't count on a Tarantino movie because you know how much Tarantino loves to really bring back people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I mean, that could be possible. And if you're in, a, you know, if you're going to be in a Tarantino movie, but no matter who you are, that's like, if you're anybody, it's almost like a Yeah, but it's like, it. is, like, can you even see Bruce Willis being a good character actor right now? Like, I can't. I mean, he's done it before. He's done it before. But he never but was great. Even even in Tarantino and Pulp Fiction, he's a, he's kind of a straight guy character. There's nothing like, there's not he's, a lot of, he's also Bruce Willis in that as well. Yeah, there, exactly. There's yeah. not a lot of depth to him. I mean, there is, but there's not a lot of like, he's not playing any like unique role or anything. He's kind of like a your your access to movies. He's kind of like the straight guy. What was your favorite Bruce Willis movie? I mean, it's probably Die Hard. Uh, yeah, I'd probably say Die Hard. What yeah. else is there? I mean, it, you can't really say Pulp Fiction because he's what a, a quarter of that movie, right? Like, yeah, I, exactly. Like, like I can't I, really. I guess I I like Pulp Fiction more than Die Hard, but yeah, that's true. But like, you can't say that's your favorite. Willis movie because it's not his movie. Yeah. Oh, uh, Looper. Looper. Looper was sick. Looper's good, but Lucky Number Seven was good too. That's the yeah, Josh he, Hartnett one. He plays uh, Bruce Willis in that movie. He also plays <laughs> Bruce Willis in that movie. <laughs> plays Bruce Willis in every. Yeah, movie. that movie was all right. Even in Looper, uh, Joyce and Gordon Lovett plays Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> he, even other people play. Uh, other people play Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah, a young Bruce Willis. He kind of fucking looked like him in that one too. They did all the makeup and stuff. Yeah, that's too. true. Yeah, they yeah, made yeah. it look. Mm-hmm. That was done by who did that movie? It was the guy that did Brick. Yes, which is uh, I can't remember his name. And he did something recently too that was really good. Or he was. I can't see him going down the Marvel direction. I is think he that? did do a Marvel movie. Yeah. That seems to sound familiar. Or he's in the. Or he's in line to do one. But yeah, fucking great movie. Yeah, if you haven't seen Looper, fuck check that out. That's a good, good time. Oh, Sixth Sense. Oh, yeah. Oh, the M.H. Shyamalan ones, yeah. Could... Unbreakable also. I'd probably give him the best acting is in Unbreakable, probably. Well, I was going to say Sixth Sense. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's no, there's not really any, like, you know, Oscar speech scenes in that movie or whatever you want to fucking call them. Like, monologues and stuff in, like, Sixth Sense. But it's a really good movie and does a good job. He wears that hairpiece like a champ. Do you wear hairpiece in that? <laughs> yeah, what's that? <laughs> I can't remember which show it was, but someone's like, yeah, it's like, you know, when there's a twist, like at the end of The Sixth Sense, when you find out that guy in that airpiece was Bruce Willis all along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twelve Monkeys. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's in something else with Brad Pitt, right. too. What do you think about Twelve Monkeys? Like? Twelve Monkeys is like a really great He's, good in, He's great in that. Fifth Element. Fifth Element. I was, this is something I was like, okay, this is his connection to these movies. He was He was a space guy. Yeah. In The Fifth Element in 1997. He was really good in The Fifth Element. Well, yeah, The Fifth Element's an awesome movie. So I feel like, yeah, that's kind of his transition to these types of movies anyway. I mean, I, I feel like that's why people can associate him with, with like, space movies like this. I always see him as a cop. But, <laughs> yeah. But, but even in, like, not Die Hard movies, he's mm-hmm. always usually a cop. Like, what's that Kevin Smith movie that was really bad that he was in Cop Out? <laughs> yeah, fuck. Yeah, a cop or a... Um, like a military guy sometimes. A military guy, or I was going to say, like, a disciplinary father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an angry dad, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there like is an, a movie. In Armageddon, he's like uh, Liv Tyler's dad, right? Yeah. So he's like... An angry, like, yeah, he's disciplinary, like, you're not going to go the same route I went. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. like how he treats, like, Ben Affleck, he's like... Um, He's like, what are those five words I told you to say? I'll never do it again. He's like, damn right you won't. Like, to shit like that, right? I don't know. I mean, as far as Bruce Willis movies go, that's probably, like, one of the better ones. Probably it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Armageddon's all right. Whole, you know? whole nine yards. I'm a more of a whole ten yards kind of guy. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm more of a whole eleven yards. Right? Whole 11. Is there a whole eleven yards? Not yet. Better not be. <laughs> that kid's in the works. Matthew uh, Perry's whole, got whole a whole nine too. yards is decent. Whole nine yards is all right. It's good. Yeah, he plays a... He plays Bruce Willis in that. Yeah, movie. he's a con. He's like a he's he's not a con. He's an he's assassin. A, he's an assassin. Yeah, he's, he moves in next door. <laughs> yeah, he's also always plays an assassin as well yeah. too. He's usually he's like someone with a gun yeah. with a uh, tough guy attitude. Oh, Sin City, Sin City. See, he's really good in Sin City. Yeah, well, that might be it. And then now we're getting into the shit, as the, the vets would say. So we have Looper at when was that? Twenty twelve. Yeah, that's kind of where it starts to. Well, I'm wondering if that's his last good movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so so Looper came out in 2012. After that... That was nine years ago. 
yeah, after that, he was in Glass. Like, I would say Looper's his, his last, like, good movie. Yeah, and since then, it's kind of been these ones. I saw there was one with him and, like, Adrian Brody in it and stuff. That was rated, like, three or something like that. Like, <laughs> there was so many of them. I was going through the list. I was like, I've never even heard of these. Like, and they're, yeah. ju- they're just like, you I know. know. <laughs> There's also, you go to his IMDb page. This is very unique. There's... Ten movies here that are in production. Oh oh my god, he's got ten going right now. (laughs) He only works a day, so he could fit in 50 movies in a year, I guess, if he wants to. (laughs) How insane is that, that there's ten movies that are in pre-production? Can Mr. Wolf make it on Wednesday? No, he's actually uh, filming another movie (laughs) for the day on that one. But he'll be done after that day, so he can finish it on Wednesday. Maybe he does all of his movies in one two-week period. And then the rest of the... Oh, yeah, like how they like, shoot those, like how they shoot Jeopardy, right? Like, fuck it, let's shoot it all in, like, two weeks or, like, or all in a couple <laughs> a days. Day, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. Could be. Yeah. Uh, anything else to say about <laughs> Cosmic Sin? Oh, fuck. Don't watch it. I mean... Oh, I was gonna say one of my favorite, like, reviews I saw was the title, like, the a title for a critique that was uh, Cosmic Sin, finally a movie that delivers on its title yeah i saw that one too there was one that was like uh the only real sin here was the production company uh getting the yeah i mean it's yeah, easy yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy, easy yeah. but i still thought that was but the, i thought the phone one was funny it was like you can't even call it phoning it in because the phone has more emotion than the fucker does and, uh, and you just see some of the scenes where like he just says his lines he's like well i think like yeah and you're just like well, 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 come on man like i think uh, what did I say when you're watching this? I was like, I've seen better production out of Black Mirror episodes and shit. Like, it's fair. like for for like a big like a, a movie. Like, I was like, I felt that like you know how everyone always says too how they're like, oh, I could do a better job than that. This is one of those very few situations where I was like, I honestly feel like I could write <laughs> a better script than this. Right. Like, yeah, I, yeah, no, it's true. Like, it's kind of like a naive film student script. And like, did you notice at the beginning though, like the the cameras, how they how shaky they were? Oh god, Dude, the camera work was pretty bad. There was one moment at the very end when his like his like love interest is back, but the one of the, I guess the main villain is like behind her. Oh yeah, and he's directly behind her in the shot. I was like, move the fucking camera! Yeah. I can't see the guy. <laughs> Christian Bale would fuck your shit up <laughs> for that. Christian Bale would freak out, man. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Oh yeah. So many, like that was, yeah. Like I've like, that's what I thought. I was sitting there. I was like, you know what? A lot of people say that where they're like, I can do a better job than this. And you know what? They made a fucking movie. So yeah, it's true. Good, I know, you know, I know, good for them. Uh-huh. But like, I still stand by what I'm saying. I could probably fucking pull something better out we'll of my do ass. It, man. <laughs> I mean, give me $10 right. million dollars and Bruce Willis. <laughs> I'll get something out of him. Like, <laughs> Bruce, I really don't believe you don't want to be here right now. <laughs> That's true. I mean, we, we we know he has a price. You can probably give him a million dollars and he'll come to his, your birthday party. Fifty grand. Crack a smile. Boom. <laughs> there you go. That's the only thing he doesn't do, actually. He won't if crack I, a smile. I mean, if I won the lottery, I'd pay him a million bucks to just come stand at my party. And, like, not talk, <laughs> Why? To, not talk to anybody. Just be kind of a dick. You know, just be, to talk. Yeah, yeah. No, just kind of stand there. But he probably wouldn't. Like, someone would be like, oh, my God, Bruce Willis. would be like, keep walking, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. possible. Make more tux, too. Fuck, this movie's bad. <laughs> Fuck, this is bad. Anything else you want to say? No, it was so bad. Don't watch it. <laughs> I, I, if Mystery Science Theater was still doing stuff, this would be a good one for them to... Yeah, that's true. This yeah. would be right up their alley because mm-hmm. you could pick this apart by watching this. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like we're not doing it justice by describing it. Like you got like if you like picking shit apart though, like and having a good laugh with your yeah. buddies. Like if you have those bad movie parties, this would be one of those I would recommend. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not as good as the classics, you know. It's not. It's not. You know, there, there's definitely others. There's. It's like there's better bad movies. Yes. I yeah. So I tend to be a little. Look at that oxymoron there. Eh? There's better, better bad, bad movies. movies. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah, Look at I that tend to be a little more uh, critical when picking bad movies because I used to have a bad movie night with some friends, and we wondered what the lowest rated movie was on IMDb at the time, and still might be. Was I already talked about this movie in this episode? Is Baby Geniuses Two with John Voight? It is the lowest rated movie. What's so that bad boy cooking at? 
dude. We were like... 1.2. 1. 1. Oh, no, I can't remember. It is 1.2 or something oh. like that. But um, we were like, all right, let's watch it. It was just an awful experience. There was no laughable moments in it. It was just bad. Bad. So that's why I'm like, yeah, choose your bad movies wisely. But, yeah. But yeah. Um, like, you need a good bad movie. You, like, you know the ones that are always good? I always see is that uh, I don't swim runs them during the daytime. They're really? like the lifetime movies or like oh, yeah? those like my mother's a murderer kind of movies. Okay. Like those are always good yeah, for yeah, a laugh. Yeah, yeah. Like uh-huh. if you want to get like daytime stone and watch those things because it's always like over the top. Like she never loved you. <laughs> like the mo- like the made for TV movies. Yeah, like, that's true. Those usually are pretty cheesy and can get a good laugh. Yeah, but like. Yeah. But those are not real actors, so you're expecting them to be like. Yeah, there's so many reasons why. Yeah, you're expecting it to be bad. Yeah, you know what I mean? When you see a movie like this, or you see Bruce Willis... Well, okay, like, uh, that I guess that is a distinction here, is like... Uh, so, Corey Large, who produced this movie... <laughs> see, Large! He knows what he's doing, and he's producing these movies with this much money, and they're all the same, and it's like, he'll get this much money out of them, right? Whereas, like, other movies like The Room or Birdemic... They're just fucking confused, and <laughs> they they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, and they think they're these like are they're like mentally ill, really? Probably <laughs> mental ill. I'm going to mentally it's, ill. It's true. Are though. you talking about C. Lard or like Wazell and <laughs> no, the guys no, no. in the Birdemic? Like Wazell and the guys in the Birdemic. Like there's something not all there. Like they they like Wazo still thinks he's a artistic mastermind, right? Oh yeah, yeah. When he was like, he's like, I meant to make it funny. I was like, no, you didn't. No, but in a way, he's right. Because like, look at the success of it. Like even still, like disaster movie they fucking made, right? This yeah, yeah. Called. A disaster film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The documentary on it. The the yeah, the, that wasn't a documentary. No, yeah, the James Franco. Exactly. One. That was actually really good. But he Tommy Wazo made a shitload of money off of that movie because. Yeah. Franco had to go hang out with him, and even Franco was like, what the fuck? He was like, Franco's a weird fucker, too. I'm like, yeah. if he thinks someone's weird, then, you <laughs> know, true. they gotta be fucking weird, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If Franco's mm-hmm. saying you're weird, then, you know. But, yeah, like, yeah, like, this, like these movies, like, they're so bad, they're just not... Because it's like... They're, they're just not entertaining, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah. you gotta have the cheese factor, right? Mm. Like, but I like when movies end up being bad and they were like, oh, we meant to do that all along. Like the Nick Cage one. What's the one that's like everyone finds funny? Uh, the Re- Wicker Man. Right. Yeah, they came yeah. out later. They're like, we meant to make it like yeah. that. I was like, bull yeah. fucking shit you did. Well, I, guess I was like, just, you tried to make a genuine thing. I guess the distinction is when you lose that so bad quality is when they have too much money. Like in this movie. Like there's a lot of all those space shots. The, some of the special effects I was yeah. like, are not awful. Exactly. Like... But when they make a movie like Birdemic and the only way Wolf. they can film is in their backyard or, you know, on some beach, my favorite is they, so the world's gone to shit, pretty much everyone's dead and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And this, you see this guy walking in a white suit on the beach and he's like, hello, I am a biologist. Why everything is happening is for this reason. And he walks away and it's like the minds to think of that, like... <laughs> You were like, this is okay. Like, it's let's insane. leave this in. It's insane. But it's fucking amazing. I mean, I did have that time. That sometimes when we were watching this movie, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, somebody watched this and was like, yeah, fuck it. Put it out there. Like, I was like, because right. like some points in the dialogue and like some of the cut scenes were really bad too in the camera and stuff. I was uh-huh. like, at no point were they like, you know what? Let's shoot it again. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it was just I was like, they're like, let's leave it in there. <laughs> like, it works. Yeah. But yeah. This one lacked that. Like, mm-hmm. with movies like Birdemic and stuff, you're just like, oh, God, you, you guys don't know what you're doing. But with this one, I feel like they knew what they were doing. They just didn't care. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what makes it way worse. And, yeah, and that's where you, when you lose that so bad, it's good quality, yeah. I think. So yeah. look for that, I guess. Yeah. If it's the like, budget's too high, <laughs> choose yeah. a different one. Yeah. But all right. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, that was our uh, review of what the fuck was this called again? <laughs> Cosmic Sin. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we call it? Yeah. Call it a cosmic scent. All right. Fuck, that was bad.